Goodbye, Brent. At the beginning of August, I decided that I wanted to add a roommate because we've got plenty of space, cats that need attention, and the money wouldn't hurt. My husband didn't take too much convincing because he's just that kind of go with the flow guy. But if my flow causes any issues, he'll be sure to point that blame my way. Can you blame him? Now I don't know how y'all choose roommates, but I've never liked this whole Facebook scene. So I keep it classic with Craigslist. Don't tell me that's where all the creepers are because there's no shortage of them on any of those sites that you find roommates on. We had tons of contacts trying to hit up my ad. Mothers looking for places for their son to stay. Families wanting to squish into our room and pay the same rent. Babushkas living on social security and single parents looking to rebuild themselves. We then met Brent almost a week after pandering possible roommates. The most normal seeming prospect who works event security and he seemed to keep busy on his off days with his friends. Brent was just a kid with a dream of saving up enough for a down payment on a mobile home and then living by himself, masturbating every single day. He had no desire to get tied up in a relationship. He also wanted to simplify his bills by using public transportation rather than owning his own vehicle. Well, Brent inspected our place for over the course of 10 minutes and then wanted to move in immediately, which meant tomorrow for us. We had no issues that we thought, aside from no longer being able to walk around naked. The clock is indeed ticking for that opportunity for us, and we only have about a year before our infant becomes too enlightened to not question why. Why is mommy and daddy naked here, but never there in public? So anyways, Brent, my husband and I, we all lived together for two months, almost, with little interaction after the move-in date. He paid his rent timely, and he barely had a presence outside of his 6 a.m. cackles, screeching like a little witch, presumably playing some kind of online phone game as he claimed it. He would occasionally come out of his room looking for our cat to pet, or peer into the kitchen and watch me cook. But when I offered him food, he would just say, no. Want some lemon blueberry pancakes, Brent? No. He never had any manners. There was no please, no thank you. Just no. And right after he'd say no, he would just walk away. The day before Brent turned 29, I was sweeping and mopping the house floors to get all the little crummies off. The word crummy comes from Brent. He would say that was the stuff that sticks to the bottom of my feet. And it's pretty cute, right? Crummies? Anyways, I get to his bathroom, which is actually the common area bathroom if... We actually had guests, they'd use it. And there it is. A nasty-ass, dried-ass puddle of what appears to be pee by the toilet. It wasn't just a miss. It was like a revenge piss or a sleepwalking piss. Dried up, just waiting for me to see. I give him two days to clean it up before I get the courage to confront his gross ass. I never actually saw him during those days because of our opposite work schedules. So I sent him a text and it read, Hi Brent, I wanted to ask in person, but I haven't seen you around. I went to sweep slash mop the common areas, and I saw what appears to be a dried puddle of pee in front of the toilet. Bob and I haven't been using the restroom. Can you please clean this up? Not sure if it's pee, but I can't think of what else it would be. I don't clean people's personal excrements. LOL. He replies, Yeah, sorry about that. It's just the water that dripped down from the cabinet. Not sure why it's yellow, but it, I was washing my face and it splashed down a bit from, from the front of the cabinet, and it came out that dark yellow, and I was looking for a Swiffer to clean it up myself, but you guys were all asleep, and I, I couldn't find it. If you leave it out for me, I'll take care of it when I get back. He's been here nearly two months, and he's now just asking for the cleaning supplies? Odd. I mean, it's kind of just sitting out all over him. I don't really hide that stuff because I want everyone to participate. But how about you get on your hands and knees, kid? Just clean it up. I mean, what happened to the old sense of elbow grease? That's piss for God's sake. I respond with, cool, no worries. Uh, we can designate a spot for the cleaning supplies. Bob and I fail to replicate the incident by pouring water from our cabinets and see if it looks yellow as it seeps from them to the floor. I'm not convinced it wasn't pee, but I didn't want to just freak out over nothing. A few days later, the day after Brent's 29th birthday, he decided it was time that we have a chat. See, not too long back, he actually arranged the fridge and managed to create an empty shelf. It remained empty for about a week before I went shopping. I picked up a few items and the shelf was now in use. I didn't think much of it, but I thanked him for his organization. So for the chat, Brent starts it by saying, I cleared the shelf in the fridge and, and now it's, it's full again. I say it's the least full since I've been living here. I mean, that's nothing for food in the fridge in comparison to what I grew up with. And also, we've avoided shopping in bulk to ensure that he's got room if he wants to use it. Also, if you don't put stuff 
stuff in the fridge, that cold air escapes and it's harder to retain the temperature when opening and closing the fridge. He seems annoyed and says he doesn't like trying to find food in the fridge, you know, as if there's multiple layers. I'd agree, but at the same time, there were a few empty drawers and there was a pretty good amount of shelf space not in use. So I tell Brent to just go shopping and we can organize it from there. Rather than saying that sounds good, he just storms off without saying a single word and presumably leaves for work. The whole interaction was less than a minute, but it was a big red flag. I mean, do we really want to deal with this kind of attitude? This kid can't communicate. He's 20 fucking nine and he can't even handle a little bit of confrontation. I've got my own baby and I can't deal with this guy adding extra drama and pissing on the floor. I gotta get him out of here. So we do the unthinkable. We call his parents and ask, can he move back in? After all, he still needs to grow up. So let's shove that bun back in the oven where he came from, eh? His dad answers reluctantly and agrees to take him back in after his wife can be heard yelling in the background, Todd, bring him back home. My baby. Well, that explains it. Brent's got mommy issues. He was loved to death and it made him weird. The dad actually says, He gets rude to women a lot. And he also says, He gets weird about that fridge too. Although my only experiences with him was that he walked off in the heat of the moment looking like he was about to cry. His parents promptly contact him after our call. Brent texts me. Sorry I asked for space in the fridge. Guess that warrants me getting kicked out. I reply, it's not about the fridge. It's because you couldn't have a conversation and and then you just walked out of the middle of it. He replied, the conversation was you telling me I'm wrong and that I'm rude for wanting to have my own food. Nice of you to call my parents before talking to me about it. Didn't realize letting things go is walking away from a conversation. I replied, I told you to go shopping and we'll make room for your food. If I'm rude for wanting to have my own food is what you got from that, then I don't need to say anything else. He responds, I'll get my stuff and leave in the morning. So I state the obvious. Sounds good. We give him October's rent back, and then the next morning he walks outside to be picked up by his mom. I create some small talk with him before she arrives. He reveals that he's got no friends. He spends his off days going to a cafe to use their Xbox for a flat fee of $15, playing games by his lonesome all day long. He's alone and he prefers to be alone because all of his friends have moved on, got married, had kids, and left him behind. It was bittersweet. On a sadder note, his parents charge way more rent than we did and was further away from his place of work. So he gets picked up, I walk in, and guess what I find on our recently mopped floor by the front door? Another small puddle of yellow tinted fluid. Less than an hour after Brent leaves, we find ourselves walking around the house naked and relieved and ready to enjoy our remaining year of our girls' infancy as a pseudo-nudist colony till the emperor becomes aware of our new clothes. If you live alone or just with a mate and you're not living in the nude, you're definitely missing out. I hope one day Brent gets to feel this satisfaction, but he wasn't our man-child race. Keep in mind, you don't always have to wait 30 days to get rid of a bad tenant. Sometimes you can just call their parents.